In the late 90s and early 2000s, the dot-com boom was in full effect. Originally thought to just be a series of tubes, it turns out this internet thing was going to stick around after all. Everyone was looking to monetize this new technology and the virtual gold rush was on. All manner of entrepreneurs and visionaries battled each other, each trying to gain an advantage over the other. With so many new dot-com companies sprouting up, everyone was fighting to find a hook. And for one company, they found theirs in a sock drawer. The Horror! Launched in November of 1998, Pets.com was a website designed to cater to, well, pets. The idea behind it was to disrupt the current brick-and-mortar retail store model of pet ownership. Instead of having to drive to the grocery store and grab heavy dog food bags, why not do yourself a favor and just get them shipped to your house instead? It was a great idea. So great an idea that there were several other pet goods websites competing with them. Pets.com needed some way to set themselves apart from the pack. They decided they would go all in on their marketing and make it so their website was the first pet care site people thought of. They hired the advertising firm of TBWA Worldwide, who are already known for their ads involving the Taco Bell Chihuahua. TBWA wanted a character that would represent the pet perspective and reach the same conclusion you'd make walking down the street or going to the store. A sock puppet. The director for one of the first spots was Michael Patrick Chan. Chan was part of the legendary MTV sketch group The State and is probably the reason that fellow cast member Michael Ian Black ended up being the voice of the puppet. Pets.com put everything into this idea, as Michael Ian Black described the first day of shooting in an episode of the Go For Broke podcast. I remember an executive saying something along the lines of, this has to be a home run. And then I also remember, like the ad guys, having a look of projecting confidence and emoting terror like i didn't know like the whole thing was like hanging in the balance about whether like i could make a good joke about a frisbee like i didn't know thank god i didn't know i would I, I would have blown it luckily he didn't blow it and the commercials were an instant hit the ads resonated with people who just love that puppet though the first ad only aired in august by november the sock puppet was already a balloon in that year's macy's thanksgiving day parade Pets.com CEO Julie Wainwright claimed that Macy's themselves reached out and put them in for free. By January, he was in a Super Bowl commercial, but that one cost Pets.com a million dollars. There's no way around it. The puppet was a pop culture phenomenon. When Charles Schultz of Peanuts passed away, Nightline had the puppet on to talk about it. Um, I don't know. I mean, sure. It's kind of suspect that the puppet appeared on ABC programming right around the time Disney bought a 5% stake in the company in exchange for around $11 million in advertising. But come on, who could possibly notice that? This is The Daily Show with Jon Stewart, the most important television program ever. That deal caught the attention of Jon Stewart and The Daily Show, who are always relishing a chance to point out media malfeasance. But in looking at that puppet, Jon Stewart couldn't help but notice that it reminded him of someone. But who was it? Was it Vance the Generous? No, that's not it. Oh wait, it's this guy. I mean, you've got your ver veritable pick of the litter. You can choose from all, of, all kinds of guys who have no idea how to please you. Triumph the Insult Comic Dog is a late night with Conan O'Brien character created by Robert Smigel. By 1999, Triumph had become the most popular recurring character on the show. Smigel was aware of the Pets.com puppet, but mainly brushed it off. He was starting to grow a little concerned, though, as he was developing a TV show for Comedy Central which would feature a lot of puppets and didn't want to confuse the market. He told the LA Times, I wasn't up in arms because my parents think everything on TV is stolen from me. It wasn't until other comedians started to point out the similarities that Smigel began to take issue. One of those comedians was Jon Stewart, who had an idea he wanted to run by Smigel. Smigel talked about it on SiriusXM's sit down with Alfred and Chris. There was a the, lot the of internet weird, bubble. They yeah. start, suddenly the sock puppets started turning up on all these, like on Nightline and yeah. Good Morning America, and he was mocking it, and he said, would you do our show because it's obviously a ripoff of Triumph. Like independently, yeah. he had this uh, notion. So and you were like, asked, oh, if, if other people are starting to think this. Yeah, and Conan, I asked Conan, is it okay to do this? And he said, yeah, it's actually probably a good thing if somebody else is pointing that out. 
Triumph appeared on The Daily Show and made fun of how Pets.com and other famous puppets had ripped him off. At some point after the appearance, Robert Smigel sent a possibly threatening letter to Pets.com. As far as I know, the contents of the letter have never been fully revealed, so it's hard to tell if Smigel's letter went too far. It's not hard to tell if Pets.com's response went too far, as in April of 2000 they sued Robert Smigel for defamation to the tune of $20 million. As you might imagine, a legal document describing the beef between two puppets is wild. The document describes Triumph as, quote, a rubber dog that interacts with various live animals as well as people, regularly uses vulgarity, insults both the humans and other dogs around him, and often conducts physical attacks of a sexual nature on female dogs. Mm, it's true, but he shouldn't say it. The obvious question worth asking is just why did Pets.com go so hardcore with their response to his letter? They claimed it was a standard response to protecting their intellectual property, but I think it probably goes beyond that. This is only my opinion, but I think this lawsuit was a desperation move. I mentioned earlier just how popular the Pets.com sock puppet advertising campaign was. The only problem was that despite the ad campaign's popularity, it wasn't translating to sales. Well, that's not entirely true. It was only translating to sales of sock puppet merchandise. People flocked to Pets.com to buy the toy or the sock puppet book. That's right, he wrote a book. But those people weren't ordering the actual pet supplies. Pets.com's all-in approach to advertising was designed to build the brand to the point that they could get a dedicated, consistent customer base. They were fighting an uphill battle to convert people from retail to online shopping, so they started offering deep discounts and free shipping on many of their products. The issue was those discounts cut so deep into their profit margins that they were losing money on every sale. That's right, Pets.com was basically the Michael Scott paper company, and no matter how many times they ran the numbers, it wasn't looking good. That puppet was really all they had going for it, and they were going to defend it to the death. The lawsuit left Michael Ian Black in a very awkward position, as he described in an interview of Fresh Air with Terry Gross. Because I was, I, I was in, in the camp of uh, Triumph far more than us. I mean, you know, I'm never gonna, I'm never gonna, you know, side with the, you know, the corporate masters in any creative dispute. And then when Pets.com started taking it seriously, they, they literally had me hold a press conference as the sock puppet. <laughs> and it was one of the most like degrading things I've ever done. I was uh, like underneath a podium or something and my arm would be up and I would be, you know, speaking to the press. And there were press there about this ludicrous lawsuit that Pets.com had, had filed. You have no idea how much I wanted to find that press conference footage, but I couldn't. There was another press conference we're going to talk about, though. While initially quiet because of legal reasons, Late Night with Conan O'Brien was given the go-ahead to talk about the controversy on their show, which was highlighted by the return of Triumph the Insult Comic Dog to the airwaves to give his take on the matter with his own press conference. I mean, come on, people, come on! Come on, take a look at, take a look at this lawsuit! Now I know why human beings wipe their ass! <laughs> I just threw away my arm, too. Despite the hopes of Pets.com and the alarming number of newspaper writers who love puns, the case never went to trial. On January 18th, 2001, a mere 734 days after their website launched, Pets.com liquidated their assets and shut down for good. One month later, the lawsuit was dismissed. In the years since, Triumph's popularity has only grown. He continued to interact with various live animals as well as people, regularly use vulgarity, insult both the humans and other dogs around him, and often conduct physical attacks of a sexual nature on female dogs. The sock puppet wasn't so lucky. He returned to the mascot world, sans Michael Ian Black, for the not shady at all auto loan company Bar None. Look on a mascot, my boy. Their slogan was, everybody deserves a second chance. They're out of business now. The Pets.com puppet has become the avatar for the dot-com crash. When E-Trade had a Super Bowl commercial in 2002 that skewered failed dot-com companies, the commercial ended with the sock puppet's corpse. Wait, do puppets have corpses? While there are plenty of other victims of the dot-com crash, Pets.com is the one everyone remembers. I guess that means they had a really good advertising campaign. Good or bad, everyone has some sort of feeling about that little guy. I think you gotta give it to Pets.com. Even though it ended badly, I think the puppet was great. For me, to poop on. Thanks for watching.
you like this video, please like and subscribe and check out my other videos. Also, check out the description. There are people who are much better equipped than I am to explain just why Pets.com failed, and their videos are a fascinating look at their hubris. I am also only 75% sure I know what hubris means.